If you were following uh, my reporting last week, I interviewed the attorney for Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. It's up on youtube.com slash TYT Politics. Judge James Bosberg uh, ruled that the Dakota Access Pipeline uh, and the Army Corps broke the law. In the Dakota Access Pipeline uh, broke the law in granting that permit, uh, more specifically the Army Corps, uh, because they did not take into account environmental justice as well as other concerns. So a judge ruled, I believe it was a week and a half ago, that the Army Corps uh, broke the law. It was, uh, I interviewed the attorney, and he ordered a status hearing for this week um, to make decisions on going forward. He did not immediately shut down the shut down the pipeline, which has been in operation for over a month now, flowing oil. And there's already three oil spills that we know of. Three oil spills that we know of at this point. Probably a lot more that haven't been reported, if I'm just keeping it real. So let me read to you uh, what came, up, came out of that status hearing. As discussed at the June 21st, 2017 status hearing, the 249 joint motion for briefing schedule is granted. The court orders that Opening briefs of no more than 20 pages each shall be submitted by July 17, 2017 by Defendant United States Army Corps of Engineers and Intervenor Defendant Dakota Access. Responses of no more than 40 pages in total shall be submitted by August, August 7, 2017 by Plaintiff Standing Rock Sioux Tribe and Inventor in, Intervenor Plaintiff Cheyenne River Sioux Tribe. Uh, any other in intervener or consolidated plaintiff may file a brief up to 10 pages by August 7, 2017, dealing only with issues not raised by Standing Rock and Cheyenne River. Replies of no more than 10 pages each shall be submitted by August 17, 2017 by the Army Corps and Dakota Access. Uh, sir replies of no more than 20 pages in total shall be submitted by August 28, 2017 by Standing Rock and Cheyenne River. And any other intervener or consolidated plaintiff may file a sir reply up to five pages by August 28, 2017, dealing only with issues not raised by Standing Rock and Cheyenne River. If that sounds like a whole lot of word garble, it is. So I'm going to flip it around gangster style, and uh, you could listen to the attorney uh, for Standing Rock Sioux. I think he describes where we're at. The last question is what happens with the pipeline in the interim? Normally when a federal agency violates the law by not looking at environmental risks well enough, uh, the appropriate remedy is to invalidate the underlying permit. And without a permit, they don't get to operate this pipeline. The judge has asked for the parties to submit legal briefs on that question. He's recognized there's a lot at stake in that question, not just for the tribe, but also for the company. So over the course of the summer, we will be making our best arguments to the court that he should shut down the pipeline pending the completion of a lawful environmental review. And that's, that's uh, uh, how things will be unfolding. Uh, we expect a decision sometime around maybe September. All of this, basically the judge is asking for Standing Rock Sioux Tribe, Army Corps, Dakota Access Pipeline, which would be Energy Transfer Partners, to send in their arguments for why the pipeline either should be shut down and, and operations should stop or should continue to the judge. The judge is giving uh, them till basically August, so the hearing for this would be in September. If you ask me, this judge has kicked the can down the road long enough. It has been consistent and continual, um, you know, continuations, and you have a hearing, and then he decides he needs more, and send it over uh, for months, months down the road, we'll make a decision. Ultimately, it seems that September will be when a final decision is made. That's what it seems, based on what I read and what the Standing Rock Sioux attorney just said. So the good news is the judge did say a week and a half ago that the Army Corps broke the law in terms of granting the permit. They did not take into consideration environmental justice uh, laws and rules. Uh, so the judge, that is literally the first victory Standing Rock Sioux Tribe has had in the legal system. Sure, former President Barack Obama had denied the final permit. Obviously, President Trump reversed that. But in terms of the legal system, the Judge Bosberg saying this is, this was illegal, how they distributed and granted this permit. He's talking about President Trump and his administration granting the permit. That is, sorry, that is a positive, that is a positive step in the right direction. So basically what you have here is 
both sides will be putting in their briefs. Obviously, I will keep in touch with the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. Just so you know, I always reach out to Energy Transfer Partners and DAPL and the Army Corps for comment. They don't respond. So I am doing my due diligence just so I could say I reached out to the oil police and the goons. But uh, it seems that we have some progress and some action going on. I'm not going to give you false hope. False hope. It is a long stretch. It's a long shot to have a multi-billion dollar crude oil pipeline shut down at this point. It's never happened that I know of in American history. Um, usually, legal systems do not step in to shut down mega big oil projects or infrastructure projects, as they call it, which, as I've shown you, is complete bullshit. But we shall see. We shall see. Uh, at least there's a small chance. There's a small chance. And as, al as I always say, you got to keep fighting. Even if you're going to lose the battles, you got to keep fighting. You do not win a war if you give up. You do not win a war. If when you lose the battle, you say, oh, fuck, we're never going to win, so let's just give up. I have a lot of days on this job when I'm in Flint or Standing Rock or I was just in North Carolina, and you feel like you're literally doing this for no reason. You feel like no matter what, you're never going to put people in jail that deserve to be in jail. You're never going to deliver justice or help expose what's actually going on to hopefully cause a change and spark change. I feel that a lot. Trust me, if you're friends with me and you talk to me, you know I get frustrated. I'm not the most patient person, and I care deeply about these issues, but yeah, the choice is, as, as my main man, uh, Andy Dufresne said from, St from Shawshank Redemption, get busy living or get busy dying, baby. So I'm going to keep covering this, uh, even though the corporate media has stopped covering it. Frankly, a lot of independent media have stopped covering it. There's always something to cover um, when it comes to Standing Rock, and it's not just Standing Rock. There are other indigenous issues that are important to cover, and I'm trying to cover as best as I can. I know a lot of you message me. I know a lot of you email me. You want me to cover something. If only you could go into my Facebook and my email to see the 700 other people messaging me. I don't say that arrogantly. I just mean it's sometimes the choices I make, you know, everything I get is corrupt and unjust, and I'd love to cover everything, but I'm only one person. So I hope you understand if there's something you've sent to me to cover and I don't respond, it's nothing personal. It's just that I'm juggling 25,000 things usually. And I'm writing a book, if you don't know. By the way, if you don't know and you want something to read this weekend, go to corporateconjob.com. That's corporateconjob, C-O-R-P-O-R-A-T-E, corporate, C O N. Job.com. The introduction is out. Chapter one is out. Uh, chapter one is all about the Bernie Sanders campaign and how the media uh, basically burned, you know, uh, blacked him out and sabotaged him. I just, just finished chapter two, which is about covering Trump. I think it was a very tough thing to write because as a progressive, how do I write about my experience covering Trump where it would be interesting to you? Most of you have Trump fatigue. I have Trump fatigue. I think I pulled it off. I think I wrote about it in a way that will be really interesting to you. What I really tried to do in writing it was explain why the corporate media elevated this man and the history behind the profit motive for the corporate media. I'm probably going to have that chapter out in the next week, and then I'm going to start writing chapter three, which is about covering the Hillary campaign, which should be tons of fun. So I hope that you will share this video. I hope you will watch uh, the other stuff I've done this week, youtube.com slash 2 politics. I hope you will check on me to make sure I'm alive this weekend because I have no air conditioning. And as my Jewish grandmother would say, I'm schwitzing. As you can tell, I'm sweating. Um, and I will continue trying to cover Standing Rock issues, Red Fawn. I know that there's some people who wanted me to cover a case uh, of a woman named Kathleen Bennett. It's not that I haven't looked into it. I'm just juggling 700 other things. So sending me death threats, which I've gotten, or <laughs> nasty comments, doesn't exactly entice me to want to cover things uh, for you. You're not the only person sending me things. I'm, I'm sorry to tell you. So chill out. Uh, but that's it. Again, youtube.com slash TYTPolitics, at Jordan Charity on Twitter. And I would really, really appreciate if you download the introduction, chapter one, uh, this weekend. If you're interested in reading about my experience on the campaign trail, I, cut, I name names. Jake Tapper, Joy Reid, Joan Walsh, and many others. I give you and I report a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff you probably wouldn't know about and you're probably going to get pissed off about. 
finding out about. And if you are kind enough, you can contribute and donate uh, to, my, to my efforts. Uh, there's a donate tab there. You could use PayPal or Patreon. Thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. If anything breaks, I'll be there. Take care.